Hey, what is it guys? Welcome back to this game's episode. In this one, we actually start removing the enemy around our tower. And when I say remove, we're not actually shooting them just yet, but we simply pull um, every enemy around our tower. We check out which one is the closest, and we actually call the remove function on them. So guys, without further ado, let's get started. So basically what happened now is that we have those guys, uh, those enemy walking toward the tower and everything seems to work just fine but it never despawned and we never really called the function that it's called um, destroy enemy or remove enemy I mean. So we're gonna do just that today but in order to remove those enemy then the tower is gonna be shooting at them and yeah, we're gonna be doing the tower shoot mechanic first and that is exactly what we'll be tackling this episode so let's open up the tower script because it's going to be done inside the huge um, tower script. This is where we're going to be using the stats and actually uh, calculating this. So um, let's have a look at our update. We don't have an update yet I think so if I just collapse the section we don't really have an update just yet. So right about here I'm going to declare a private void update like so. And in this update we're going to be um, looking for enemies we are going to find the closest one and we're gonna shoot him. Shoot the closest enemy. But there's a few things going in there. First, we're gonna be uh, needing to detect the enemy around us. But there is one more thing that we gotta be taking uh, note of is that this tower is there in every single scene. And if we start looking for enemies around us every single uh, frame, in every single scene then this is going to be again a little bit too costly for mobile so what we're going to do is actually set a condition if is in game then we're going to be looking for enemy but now how exactly should we be um, detecting if we're in game or not well first let's actually declare a bool that does just that so private around here private bool is in game is equal to false Right, so whenever we get inside of the game, then we should be toggling this on. Now, um, there is a function that I use, not really often, but that I like to use. It's a callback, actually, from MIDI that is called whenever we enter a scene. And um, this is actually going to help us quite a lot here. So below my update, I'll declare a private void. And again, no mistake in this, because this is a callback from Unity. It is called on level was loaded. And it takes in a int, uh, and that's the level index. We're not going to be using this parameter though, but um, this function needs this parameter to be called. So basically, here it is. That's the on level was loaded, and all I'm going to do is say is in game is equal to scene manager dot get active scene dot name is equal equal to game. And by doing this, it's going to be calling this function every time we load a scene so whenever we enter the scene then this is going to be equal to true and whenever we load back the hub after actually loading this scene then it's going to go back to false so we don't need to tackle the whole um, toggle off condition it's actually going to do this on its own so that's a good thing we know that his in game is only going to be called when you're in the game scene now again game scene needs to be named like that Okay, and now we're going to be looking for enemies, and there is many ways you can do this, uh, but one I like doing, and that is not too expensive, is uh, first, let's actually set a cooldown, right? So let's let's only check once every um, attack speed reset. So basically, in this case, if time.time .time minus last attack, which is a float, uh, a float we're going to be declaring in a moment, is bigger than tower stats at the index int, stat dot speed like this let's uh, let's actually declare this so right below the private bull is in game private float last attack and here we are so now uh, this function is only going to be called every um, well, well actually well while you're in game this is only going to be called once every second I believe if tower stats is equal to one and um, of course, after one attack, one after one of those call, if we do send an attack, 
then we're going to say last attack is equal to time dot time so we can reset this okay so we're looking for enemy we're going to say collider array we're going to declare a collider array right there and we're going to do a physics dot overlap sphere and this is actually going to create a sphere on top of our tower well it's actually going to do, to create it at transform.position which is on top of our tower with a certain radius that we're about to define and it's going to get all the colliders inside of that and actually um, store them inside of array so the radius is going to be let's do tower stats at the index int stat dot range and we're gonna do a plus we should be doing like plus five or something like that here and I'll tell you why in a moment and after that we should be also setting setting a layer mask so this sphere doesn't actually get some random object around our tower such as the floor or later on some upgrades so we're gonna be setting a layer mask as well let's do layer mask dot get mask and let's create a enemy mask like so okay and we also got to be setting a name for my collider sorry didn't do that so collider call and we're getting all the enemies in our sphere that we cast on top of the tower that has this radius and that are tagged as enemy not not tagged but I mean um, that has the layer enemy on it and um, okay so we got an array let's just, just let's just go ahead and make sure that we have this enemy tag I'm going to go on my tiny enemy this guy here go under layer add layer and add a enemy layer right there now we gotta go back on him and then actually set this layer okay and also by setting a layer mask on uh, a physics function this is improving by quite a lot the, um, the CPU time we're gonna be using for this because it's only testing against those very objects alright so um if we do have enemy so if call dot length is bigger actually is not equal to zero so if it is not equal to zero that means we do have at least one enemy else we are not going to bother and just do nothing right so once we've got this at least one enemy we're gonna be doing the uh, what we had in common here so find the closest one and then we're gonna shoot it so to find the closest one I'm actually going to do I'm actually going to declare a int called closest index is equal to zero and also a float that I'll call distance and then I'll just say uh, equal to the first one so square magnitude in between call at the closest index which is zero so it's going to take the first one and then do transform dot position minus transform dot position okay so basically what we're doing here is we are um, taking the position of the tower plus the position of the enemy and we're getting the magnitude, the square magnitude in that case of um, the enemy itself. So we're going to get the square distance in between the tower and the enemy right now. And just below this, we're going to say for int i is equal to 1, int i is equal to 1, as long as i is smaller than call.length, then we're going to do i++. plus plus we open up the bracket and we do our for loop so in here we'll say um, float new distance is equal to this exact same thing so vector 3 magnitude but instead of doing closest index we're actually going to do i and right after that we're going to check if the new distance is smaller than distance then uh, let's actually swap and the index number 0 is no longer the closest one so we're gonna say this is equal to new distance and also closest index is equal to i and then once we've got this once we know which one is the closest index then we can go ahead and shoot it so let's go ahead and just do right now just to test it out call at the closest index dot get component the enemy component and we're gonna do a remove enemy on it and then once we actually shoot for real once we know that we actually sent something we're gonna do last attack is equal to time dot time 
Okay, so again, quite a lot of code. Hopefully this works in one go. We're gonna start from the preloader, press play. And now let's spawn a few things. And as you can see, some of them actually turned themselves off already. And I'm wondering right now, what is our range exactly? Because we're actually casting a sphere that has a radius of this. So what exactly is tower stats here? Well, we're actually going to debug so we know what's inside of that. So debug.log tower stats at the range index. So I'm going to press play on this. And once we're in game, we're actually going to see um, how strong or actually what level is our range. So right now 16. We're actually doing 16 plus 5, so 21. And uh, that's only for one side. That's only a radius. So it's actually covering 42 meters in total. So that's why they disappear right away. Now um, these these guys over here, so these tower stats, they're only for the level right now. A little bit later on, once we um, actually tackle the stats issue, we're actually going to assign a value for every single level in every every one of those um, stats. So basically right now this is fine. We can actually remove the plus 5 if we wish. And if you are to reset your stats then um, you're only going to cover 2. I believe it's only going to cover 2 meter. And that is because tower stats is going to be equal to 1. So that's going to be the radius. And you're only going to be able to hit enemies that are pretty much just stuck to your tower. And um, anyway, uh, I'm just going to leave that plus 5 in because of that issue I just mentioned. But again, later on we're going to be tackling these little guys here. And we're actually going to be assigning, say, a base range. So at level 1 you still have maybe a uh, 5 in radius. Alright guys, so that's pretty much it for this episode. In the next one we're actually going to start tackling uh, sending an actual projectile because this this one right here, uh, we don't really see the enemy disappear, we don't really know when they're going to disappear. We basically need something starting from the tower going straight at them. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing next episode. I hope you enjoyed this one, I hope you learned something. If you did, please leave me a like, really appreciate that. If you have any question or comment, you can also leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, please uh, subscribe for more tutorial and I will be seeing you in the next one.